So I was looking over at the New York Jets 2017 schedule, and I was like, is this team going to win anything this season? The, the New York Jets are the laughing stock of the NFL right now. Let's be honest. There's not a lot of bad teams out in the NFL that are going to be worse than 4-12 and 12 this season, but I can guarantee you with my life that the New York Jets will be at least 4-12 and 12 or under. They're trying to tank. They're one of the more visible tank teams of the NFL this season so they can get a really good draft pick and rebuild their franchise. They're pretty much broken franchise. When your biggest credential of the last five years is that Rihanna brought up the 68 Jets in a song. I don't think that's really a good image on your team. But I decided to look at if this team is going to be the fifth team in NFL history to lose all of its games, not win a single game in a season, and really figure out, are they going to go well with 16 like the, the 2008 Detroit Lions? Let's find out. So the New York Jets open up their season at Buffalo Week one. This is a division rival, very competitive, very big game for them. However, I don't see them getting the win here. I see Buffalo as a team that's going to play well at home. They have a weird organization. They are the, one of the weirder organizations in the NFL right now. They got rid of Sammy Watkins. As I was filming this video, as I was editing this video, which is very funny, but they did get Jordan Matthews, so I think this team's going to be at least competent enough. New York doesn't really have that spontaneous offense to get anything pushing, especially with their very lackluster wide receiver core, and let's be honest, the quarterback play this season is going to be awful. If anything, Matt Forte will get him some yards against this Bills D-line, but I really don't see the New York Jets picking up a victory here at week one, uh, especially in Buffalo. On the road, week one, not a good situation for the Jets. They're going 0-1 to start the season. In week two, the New York Jets face the Oakland Raiders. If you thought I was going to give them the benefit of the doubt in week one, you're wrong. And if you think I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt against an Oakland Raiders team that, without Derek Carr's injury, should have gone to the AFC Championship game last year, you're damn wrong. Oakland is a really good team. Some people will tell you that they're overrated like Mitch, but I think they're still a very good team in the AFC. Let's not deny that. They're still very competent. Derek Carr is an absolutely tremendous quarterback. And they have really, really good receiver qualities to beat up on that awful, awful defense of the New York Jets. Yes, they do have a couple of good pieces like Jamal Adams and such and Sheldon Richardson, but I really do think that they're going to expose that defense quite easily. It's the Oakland Raiders. They were one of the best teams up until Derek Carr's injury, so this is a no question for me. If you think the Raiders are going to lose, especially on the road here, you know, it's going to be beast mode's game. I, I just I don't see it. <laughs> no question uh, for this one. New York is going to be 0-2 to start the season. Week three, they take on the Miami Dolphins. Now, this one's going to be an interesting one. You could speculate that this team will win. This is their first home game of the season. They're playing a Miami Dolphins team that has Jay Cutler as their quarterback. So you could possibly put out there that they're going to win this game. However, I'm not going to be one of those defenders. I feel like the Dolphins are still at least competent enough to beat this New York Jets team. I, I feel like the New York Jets are really going to try to play this one through so that they could be like, oh, we're not tanking in this situation. But I feel like the Miami Dolphins just have a little bit more edge. Maybe it's because of JHI. I don't know, man. It, it just I don't think that the New York Jets offense is competent enough to even stave off the Dolphins defense, which I think is kind of decent. Um, but they, they don't have the pieces to make me look at them like they're explosive. They could win this type of game. It's their first home game, but I got to predict they're going 0-3 to start the season here. Week 4, the New York Jets take on the Jacksonville Jaguars at home. In this scenario, you could possibly predict them beating the Jacksonville Jaguars, but for me, fam, I'm not taking the bet. I feel like they will lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes, they have a terrible quarterback. Blake Bortles is awful garbage but they have really good receivers I mean let's be honest Allen Robinson I mean the guy can play like nobody's business he should be a top five receiver but this guy just has a terrible quarterback with him but I think their defense is solid enough to sustain any push quote-unquote that the New York Jets will try to give them I, I feel like there's just not going to be any give to the New York Jets they're not going to be able to push anything down the field there's a long substantial drives I, I just I don't see it happening I feel like this is going to be a low-scoring game. I feel like it's going to probably be like 17-10, to 10, but I feel like the Jacksonville Jaguars will get it done with their defense and have enough competence to win the game on the offensive side of the ball. So 0-4 for the Jets. 
week number five. Are they going to do it? They're going to play the Cleveland Browns? No. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you right now, I feel like the Cleveland Browns are going to win at least five games this season. They really did improve on the defensive side of the ball in their draft. I mean, they got Miles Garrett. They got Jabril Peppers. On the offensive side, they got David Njoku. They got Deshaun Kaiser, their quarterback. They still have a decent amount of quarterbacks in the background here, but I think that's their, their go-to guy later on, especially since they didn't draft him in the first round. But... I'm telling you, they really did improve. They're going to they're not gonna be this one and fifteen team like last year. They're gonna be five and eleven, I feel like, which is an improvement for the Cleveland Browns. Let's give them props. Let's give them props. I feel like their defense is going to be sustainable to the Jets. I feel like that's gonna be the key. I feel like their offense is gonna be competent enough. Uh, they don't have a lot of great running game here per se, but I feel like their defense is going to be better than anything that they could have provided last season. They they have the talent there uh, that they drafted this season to be like, damn, Cleveland could be a force later on down the line, not this season, but they definitely improved drafting this year. So with that in mind, Miles Garrett's going to have a huge day, I feel like, with that Jets O-line. I think he's going to crush them. Uh, and a lot of other guys are going to get big games uh, that are young and talented. So, fam, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cleveland, you should be happy. I feel like they're going to beat the New York Jets this season. Uh, so, I went fire for the Jets. Week 6, they play the New England Patriots at home. Uh, no. <laughs> If you really think I'm gonna put them over the Patriots, you're crazy. They they almost did win a game. Let's be let's be real. They almost beat the New England Patriots last year. But a Gronk was out, and B it was just kind of a game. I feel like they weren't giving a hundred percent to, and they still won. <laughs> this this team is not gonna beat a New England Patriots team that added so many key pieces in the offseason. Like, how does this team? get so many good pieces. It pisses me off, honestly. <laughs> like, we're all playing for second place, and this team has already won the Super Bowl. You get freaking Brandon Cooks. You get Stephon Gilmore. I mean, and you already got so many great receivers. I'm just going on to rant about the Patriots. That's how much I think the Jets are going to beat the Patriots. <laughs> it's not going to happen, folks. If you think it's going to happen, stop. I know they're at home. That's a better chance for them to win this game, but that's like giving a 1% to a 2%. It, it just it doesn't really work that way. Uh Unless if, like, every quarterback is out for them at week six, which I don't believe is going to be the case, uh, this is just going to be an easy picking day for, for Tom Brady. I feel like he has five buys this year. So with that in mind, I'm sorry to the New York Jets. Um, this is going to be the worst one to watch, I feel like. Um, but yeah, the New England Patriots, I mean, they're just going to they're gonna kick ass, and they're going to beat it against this defenseless team. So 0-6. Week number seven, we're back to the Miami Dolphins, this time in Miami. Um, I feel like in these divisional games, uh, especially with a team that's so low like the Miami Dolphins, you could go and say, hey, they're going to split the series. I think that that could be fair. Uh, and if some people are going to predict this to game or even week, uh, week three for the Dolphins and, and say the Jets are going to win one of those two games, that's fair enough. But I, I just I don't see it. I feel like the Jets are going to go 0-7 in this situation. Um, the Dolphins, like I said earlier on, are going to probably be one of the more prone targets for the Jets to win. It's a division game. Jay Cutler is in a quarterback. And Mitch loves to defend the guy, but I just I, – I don't know, man. Maybe it's a rejuvenized reju career for him, uh, the start in a weird place, this weird location for him. But I don't see – the New York Jets go into this parallel, this this game plan of we're going to win this particular game. I feel like this is going to be their time where they're just giving up. Like They know they're 0-6. 0-7 comes to the Dolphins. Um, I think the Dolphins, they did, they did have some really bad games last season. They almost lost to Cleveland last year. They blew a lot of leads last year. So if this is, if this is an implication, the Dolphins could lose this game. However... I'm going to stick to my guns here. I feel like the New York Jets are just going to blow this opportunity, and the Miami Jets are going to get a quote-unquote quality victory. 0-7 for the Jets. Week 8, we're now here with the NFC champion, Atlanta Falcons. If you think the New York Jets are going to beat the Atlanta Falcons, you're dead wrong. 
Okay, we did see the Atlanta Falcons a couple of seasons ago go 5-0 and and then just totally fail, not even making it to 500. So there are skeptics about that. We don't know that going into the season, what the Atlanta Falcons are going to bring to the table. However, I think this is a different team. I feel like this is going to be that Super Bowl caliber team that we saw in the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to be losing 28-3 to or blow- blowing those leads or anything like that. I don't think that's going to be that crazy. Um... But with this Atlanta Falcons team, you still have the reigning NFL MVP in Matt Ryan. You have a great running back, Devontae Freeman. You have, to me, the best receiver in the game, Julio Jones. And you got some pretty good defensive talent there. I really like what a couple of guys were showing to me last year. Deion Jones, for example. Um, Vic Beasley. We're not a big fan of him, but he did have a great season. So maybe he could have another good season this year. We'll see, man. I think there's some good talent out there mm-hmm. uh, for this team that's just going to be way too impactful on any side of the New York Jets. Like, it, it ain't happening, fam. If you think the New York Jets are going to beat the Atlanta Falcons, uh, the Atlanta Falcons are going to have to not show up to the game. That's the only way the New York Jets beat the Atlanta Falcons uh, in Week 8. Sorry, fam. They're going 0-8 uh, in this scenario. So, sorry, bro. Week 9, the New York Jets take on the Buffalo Bills for the second time on Thursday Night Football, November 2nd. Guys, I'm predicting it right now. The New York Jets actually win this game. Surprisingly enough, I think the Jets will finally win this game. So the answer to this question could be stopped right here. This video could be stopped. But I'm going to keep continuing why they will be 1-15. I feel like the New York Jets will win this game. It's Thursday night football. It's a different situation. Thursday nights always go to divisional games here. It's a different spotlight. And I feel like the Jets want to go at this point and be like, we cannot afford to lose this game. Like, there's a lot of strong teams that this team plays uh, in the last seven weeks of their schedule. Like, they play a couple of really good playoff contender teams. This could be their last opportunity to get a, a win for their season. So I feel like in this stage, this setup, uh, the Buffalo Bills are known to choke in these situations over the last couple of seasons. Um, I feel like this is going to be the one. I feel like this is going to be the one that Buffalo is just going to be like, man, we, be, we feel a little bad for you, Jets. That ain't going to happen like that. But I feel like the Jets are going to go out there. They're going to make a couple of really good plays. They're going to make some standouts. They're going to make it on the highlight reel because they finally won a damn game. They're going to go 1-8 and eight right here, baby. So, congratulations. You got to win, baby. Woo! No, 0-16. Week number 10, they take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. Man, I was telling everybody last season this team was going to be an impact. I put them in the wild card, and they almost did do that. But I think this year, they're going to be in the wild card. I feel like they're going to be a very solid team. They got Jamie Swenson, who I'm still not 100% reeling for, but I feel like he's gotten a lot better and is making a lot better plays. He's got Mike Evans, who is a tremendous receiver. I love the guy. I love the guy. They got Deshaun Jackson in free agency. I mean, what a banger pickup, man. What a banger pickup. So with that in mind, I mean, that offense is going to be solid. And unless if some crazy predicament happens where the defense just shuts down what Jamie Swenson gives to them, I don't feel like New York is going to be able to sustain all the great offensive explosion that Tampa Bay will give them. They're not going to be the most explosive team that they face this season. That goes to New England, who they'll have to play twice. Rest in peace. But... With this scenario, I mean, they got even better on offense with the receiver talent. The defense of Tampa Bay it was was quite shaky at times, but I don't think they're going to allow a lot of big plays to, to talent like, I don't know, Robbie Anderson, who I like, but he's the number one receiver. Not in a lot of teams he would be the number one receiver. I don't know, man. It's just, it, it to me, I don't see it happening. I think Tampa Bay is going to be too explosive for New York. I feel like they're going to be too stubborn to win this game. They have a bye week, week 11, and then week 12, they come back and play the Carolina Panthers at home. Carolina was a huge disappointing team last year. They went from being in the Super Bowl to being last place in their division. It was quite pathetic to see. And Cam Newton didn't play to the potential that we all thought. He went from MVP to LVP. But I still think the guy's going to win this game. (laughs) I think this team is going to be prone to at least getting a bounce back year, 8-8 eight and eight possibly. We'll see. That, that division is going to be one of the most intriguing div, uh, divisions in the league. But 
I just New York to me has this system where they're not going to be able to play an explosive team like the Carolina Panthers. And, and here's the biggest X factor of this game. I don't think they have a way of stopping Christian McCaffrey. If, if Carolina has figured out the pattern to give this guy the correct amount of touches with the correct amount of plays, I mean, they're going to go crazy with them, especially in this game. Like, I think this guy could rush 30 times that day for over 200 yards. Like, if they figure out that correct pattern, they're going to run all over New York. It'll be a crazy game to watch, I think, in this point, because that defense is going to give up. They'll be like, holy crap, look at this guy. So if they figure that out, shit, this game is going to be a blowout. But I think Carolina will still win this game, not knowing uh, with the Jets not knowing how to defend them. Week 13, they're going to play the Kansas City Chiefs at home. Now, this is going to be a weird game. I feel like we could be seeing the debut of Patrick Mahomes in this game. I don't know, man. I really like the kid. I think he's really, really talented. And Alex Smith, I mean, he has not been able to produce the quality seasons that Kansas City wants. He's got him to the playoffs, but they haven't been doing much after that. So maybe they get... They cut him off. They said, let's go with Patrick Mahomes. He's the guy of the future. He's the guy we drafted in the first round, for God's sakes. This could be the game. I mean, the New York Jets are one of the worst teams in the NFL. If Patrick Mahomes can do a lot of good things in there, maybe it could show his weaknesses. It could show his strengths. It could be something to work on. It could be a building block to showcase later on for Patrick Mahomes' career. So, we could be seeing that. We could be seeing a rookie quarterback against this team. But I still think the Kansas City Chiefs will beat the Jets with either quarterback. It doesn't really matter to me. they got to have a weird offense this year. If Tyreek Hill goes off, I mean, again, we're going to see some really interesting running back situations in these couple of weeks with the Panthers, Panthers and the Chiefs with Tyreek Hill and Christian McCaffrey. Um, I don't think the Jets will be able to stop him. Um, I think their defense, Kansas City's defense, is crazy good uh, compared to the New York Jets uh, with Marcus Peters, Eric Berry, etc., just in Houston. So no chance to me with that defense alone that the New York Jets will win this game. Week number 14, the New York Jets take on the Denver Broncos at Denver. Two huge things going uh, against the New York Jets here. One, they're playing in Denver. Two, they're playing the Denver Broncos defense. Josh McCown is not ready to face this defense. I feel like that's going to be true. Just like the New York Jets defense aren't going to be ready for those two running backs the two weeks beforehand, I don't think he's going to be ready for that defense. Denver doesn't have a great quarterback, right? We're going to see two very mediocre-ish at best quarterbacks between Trevor Simeon and Josh McCown. But we're going to see one defense that absolutely tears the shit out of an offense. I don't think McCown's going to make a lot of big plays on this defense. You got the you got to keep to leave Chris Harris best cornerback duo I think in the in the NFL. You're not stopping that, right? Besides maybe the Patriots. You're not really stopping that. And then you got Von Miller, who's going to absolutely cream <laughs> the offensive line of the New York Jets. It's going to be sack after sack. He might be getting six sacks this game. Who knows? But, man, he, this is just one of those things where I don't think the offenses are going to be that great. But that one defense is going to shred lower-ranked teams. And you're going to shred this New York Jets team. I, I think there's no question. So the Jets, right now, are 1-13. and Are they going to pick up a victory in their last three games? I don't know. Let's find out. Week 15, the New York Jets play the New Orleans Saints at New Orleans and fam. Uh, this hurt. This hurting just doesn't get any better, does it? <laughs> Look, I don't think the Saints are the best of the teams on this list, right? But they still got Drew Brees. <laughs> Drew Brees can have a terrible defense. He's had terrible defense for, defenses for years. And look, they did do a better job at making a defense competent in the draft this year. But he's had terrible defenses for years. But the man can still stand out. Even without Brandon Cooks. He doesn't have Brandon Cooks this year. He's going to have to throw to Michael Thomas a lot and a couple other people. So he has an addition of Adrian Peterson. He still has Mark Ingram. That offense is still competent enough for me to believe that they will be the Jets. Especially in Week 15. Let's think about this. The New Orleans Saints have always been trying to fight for a wild card spot here in the last... Mm, four or five years since they can't win their division. So with that in mind, 
this team could be on the chase for a wild card. They definitely don't want to lose this game. They lose this game, they have a huge L on their reputa- reputation, and they might not make the wild card. So they have to win this game. I think it's a must win for them, and they're not going to lose to this team. I don't think the defense is going to stop Drew Brees, and I don't think the offense is even going to put enough pressure on that very subpar defense of the New Orleans Saints. So for me, the Jets are going 1-13, and baby. we got two more games to examine. Week 16, the New York Jets take on the Los Angeles Chargers at home, their final home game of the season. Now, this is an interesting one. Week 16 of last year, the Los Angeles Chargers, or then the San Diego Chargers, did give the Cleveland Browns their only win of the season. So, will the Week 16 curse happen again for the Chargers? No. I I, I can't see it. I can't see it, man. Phillip Rivers has had so much shit thrown at him in the last, like, five or six years. It's ridiculous. Injuries after injuries after injuries after bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. And this team has not gotten through it. It has been a terrible time to be a Chargers fan. However, I still have to think that Phillip Rivers is going to be like, I'm not losing to a team of this caliber. They're not that that just doesn't want to win. I feel like they don't want to win. And in Phillip Rivers, if he loses to this team, I mean he's gonna be crushed. I, I feel bad for the guy. I really do. This is just a pity list right here for him. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I don't think like the offense is going to be getting on, you know, past Joey Bosa and a couple of other great talents. And then for the offensive side for the Chargers, I feel like Phillip Rivers is going to make enough of a charge with the receivers he probably still has, hopefully, God willing. I think that they're going to win this game. Maybe even a, a low-scoring game, but hopefully, for Philip Rivers' sake, they win. And finally, the New York Jets play the New England Patriots Week 17 at New England. Now, I feel like I'm reeling towards giving the Jets a victory here because the New England Patriots might want to rest their starters because it's the last week of the season. They probably already guaranteed their spot as the number one seed. They've already clinched their division, etc., etc., etc. And then I realized the backups of the New England Patriots are just as good or, yeah, probably better than the New York Jets starting roster. <laughs> I'm not joking when I say that. Jimmy Garoppolo is a better quarterback than Josh McCown. Fight me. I don't think any – you know what? Nobody's going to fight me on that. And there, There's better talent on the secondary team of the New England Patriots than there is on the starting roster of the Jets. That's just how it goes, man. They, they don't even start more than half of their team. I still think the Patriots will win. I don't think they want to give a pity L to their team. And also, if they're going for 16-0, we've seen them do it before in 2007. If they do it again, I mean, for God's sake – this is going to be an example of them just getting an easy victory to getting to 16-0 and, and then going to the playoffs. I feel like this team would do that. So, I mean, there is no pity loss here. <laughs> there really is no pity loss to the New York Jets or a petty win, a pity win for the New York Jets, a petty a pity loss for the New England Patriots. It ain't happening, fam. Patriots' secondary team will be the starting roster of the New York Jets. So, yes, we did just examine the New York Jets schedule for the 2017 season, and I got a feeling that they're going to be 1-15 on the season. Their only win will come Week 9, Thursday Night Football, against the Buffalo Bills at home. The worst-case scenario is they they do go 0-16. I don't think they will. It's very rare. We've only seen it once since a 16-game schedule has occurred, the 2008 Detroit Lions. But... I just don't see it happening. It could. That's their worst outcome. Their best outcome for me is 3-13. and 13. They could beat the Browns. I feel like they could beat the Dolphins once or twice. Uh, and they could beat the Bills, like I'm saying. So those are the three teams I feel like could give the Jets a win. But they also don't want to win too many games because I feel like there's going to be one or two more teams that will join them in the ranks as one of the worst teams in the league and have probably a 3-13 and or 4-12 and record. So they don't want to get too many victories. But I feel like anywhere from 0 to 3 wins is a understandable prediction of the New York Jets this season. So there you go. I don't think they're going to go on 16, but... 
Put it in the comments section. Do you think they're going 0-16? Do you think they will join the 2008 Detroit Lions for history? Uh, like the video if you enjoyed this examination of the New York Jets schedule. Of course, subscribe to the bottom line of you for more NFL content. We're banging videos for the NFL as the season is just about to get underway. Uh, subscribe. I mean, we're, we're doing a lot of great content here. Uh, you're you're going to miss out on a lot of great content if you don't. I'm not threatening you. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So thank you guys for watching the Bottom Line View. Stay tuned for more content on the way. It's Dylan.